Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, we continue talking about electrostatic field, and uh, in this particular lecture, um, we will talk about this field's strengths, its intensity. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on unizor.com. The website contains all these lectures as a course, so there is a logical connection between the lectures, and that's where I recommend you to watch this particular <coughs> lecture from, from this website. Um, the website also has, for every lecture, very detailed notes. Uh, there are problems, and some problems we will solve today. Uh, and there are exams. Um, the site is completely free, by the way. There are no ads, no financial strings attached, etc. So, just use it if you can. So, we're talking about electric field intensity. Well, first of all, let me just talk about terminology a little bit. Sometimes it's called intensity, sometimes it's called strength, sometimes it's called just electric field without any kind of additional words. In all these cases, we are talking about the same thing, and that's what I'm talking right now about. So we have already learned um, the Coulomb's law. That's the main law of electrostatic. So if you have two charges, there is also some kind of a force between them. One extorts on another, and another exhorts on the first one. So, if there is a force, and they are on the distance, we are talking about the field, obviously. And since the force depends on the charge, as we know, we can talk about quantitatively measure this force at any point. Now, what's important is to divorce the second charge, which, experience in, which, ex which is experiencing some kind of a force from the first charge, and just leave the field around the first charge uh, as, a, uh, as a subject of study by itself. So there is one particular charge, positive or negative, and there is a field around it. If you put anything into this field, this anything will, if it, if it has an electric charge, it will feel the force. But again, the force actually, though it does depend on both charges, the main one, which is the source of the field, and the second one, which basically has the field of itself, it makes sense to talk about only one field, the field which is generated by one particular force, and measure it using a probe electric, electrical, electrically charged object. So we have to agree about what is the probe, and if we will put this probe into one electrical field of one main object, or in another, based on the force which this particular probe object experiencing, we can make a judgment about which field is stronger and why. Or if it's the same field, maybe in different places, closer to the main source of the field or further. So we're talking about the source of the field, which is, I will call it, main object, electrical, electrically charged. We have the field around it, and we have a probe object, which is experiencing the force, if it's electrically charged, of course, um, if, it's if it's placed into any place into the field of the main object, right? So, first of all, let's talk about the probe object. Probe object, by definition, is a point object with electrical charge equal, e equal to one positive one coulomb. So this is the probe object. It's by definition, there is nothing to talk about here. And everybody agrees with this. Okay, so this probe object can be positioned anywhere in the field of the main object, and you can measure the force. This force, which this particular probe object is experiencing in that particular place of the field, electrical field, which is sourced in some kind of a main object, is called the electrical field intensity, or electric field strengths, or sometimes plain electric fields. 
field. But uh, so if somebody says, "Okay, what's the electric field of this main object at this point?" How to answer this question? Well, you take a probe object, position it in this field, and measure the strengths of the force which it experiences. Okay. All right. So, that's the definition of the intensity. Now, let's talk about quantitative things. Now, we all know that the force between two electrical charges, according to the Coulomb's law, law is some kind of a coefficient, which has certain dimension, times the charge of the main object change the, ch the, the charge of another object divided by uh, radius square b divided by the dif uh, um, distance square between them so these are two charges I, I use the capital and lower case just to differentiate between the main object which is the source of the field and the probe object now if probe object is positive one coulomb that means that we can talk about this quantity as the characteristic of the field of this main object which has a charge capital Q at certain place at the distance R from it. Now when we are talking about the distance it means that we are assuming that this is the main object is a point object. If it's not a point object I'll talk about this just a little bit later in this lecture. The, but for the point object, this is the definition of the intensity of the field created by this point object, which has charge Q, electrical charge Q, on the distance R from it. Okay, that's done. Now, this is the force, right? This is the force which this particular probe object is experiencing. And we know that if you have the main object and the probe object, then the force is always directed along the le this line. If, uh, if this is plus, this is the probe object which is plus one coulomb, so it's also plus. Then it's a repelling force. If this is minus, then it's attracting force. So, if it's a force, it means it has magnitude and direction. So, this is the magnitude of the electrical field intensity created by a point object charged with a Q coulombs and on a distance R from it. And the, and, and, uh, the direction of the force is defined this way. So, if my Q is negative, then the direction is negative, which means it goes towards the object. It's, by the way, similar to gravity. When we're talking about gravitation, it was also the same thing. Whatever the charge, whatever the force was directed towards the uh, source of the gravity, we called it negative. We, because of some other circumstances which we will talk about in uh, the case of electrical field as well. So you will recall this. So, if it's a negative, then the intensity of the electrical field at this point is negative because the probe object is positive one coulomb. So, that's why it's attracting. So, attracting is negative and repelling is positive. Well, you can always consider the uh, system of coordinates where, where this is at the origin of coordinates, and which means this goes along the x-axis, right? And that's why um, uh, it's considered to be positive. And if uh, Q is negative, it goes against the x-direction, direction, the traditional x-direction. So it's negative. Now, this is all about the point objects. So the main, so the probe object is always a point object, by definition. The main object, in case of the um, point object, this is basically the quantitative 
um, value of uh, intensity and this is the direction so completely solved the problem of what exactly is the intensity if the charged object is more complex than the point object then we have to deal with different story why because this is the force the force has a direction force is a vector and if this particular probe object experiences the force from more than one point object then all these forces must be combined together according to the rules of addition of vectors right the force is a vector vectors must be uh, combined to combined together using the regular addition of the vectors by the way that's one of the reasons why i was telling you many times that you have to be proficient in math especially vector algebra and uh, calculus and i will use both of them in this particular lecture okay so let's talk about a couple of examples where i would like to demonstrate what to do to define what exactly the intensity of the field is in case we have more complex uh, source of the electrostatic field than just a point object so my first example is as simple as it can be in case it's not a point so what's more complex but really very simple than a point object well two point object right so if you have two point objects okay now each of them has a charge which is the same thing just for simplicity now this creates certain field and this creates certain field both fields exist and they are interposed on each other um, and what I'm interested in is the uh, intensity of the field at any point on the uh, perpendicular through the midpoint it's as again as simple as it can be Pro probably the most simple problem which is not involving the one uh, point object so two point object and we're talking about the uh, perpendicular to the midpoint of the segment between them so what's given um, given this is the distance d so distance is known and uh, charge is known and I would like to have um, the intensity at the distance x from the midpoint All right. so this is plus 1 c coulomb this is a probe object and it, it, it has two different forces one force is along this line and that one force along this line so let's talk about two forces and then we will combine them together so one force along this line is let's call this point A and this point B this point M I'm not sure we need M, but anyway, and this is P. So E of the object, this is electrical intensity of the object at point A. So the value is divided by AP square. What is AP square? It's D square plus X square, right? by Pythagorean theorem, right? Now, AB, this is electrical intensity at this point caused by the charge uh, Q at point B. Obviously, it's equal to the same quantitative value because it's the same distance and the same charge. But the problem is that these two vectors are not collinear 
they are at angle to each other. So let's assume that these are negative, for instance. It doesn't really matter whether negative or positive. In which case, this is attraction force. How do I determine the resulting force? Well, the easiest way is to represent this vector as a sum of horizontal component and vertical component. So this vector is equal to sum of this plus this. And this vector is also represents this plus this. These two vectors, for obvious reason, they are opposite in direction and equal in magnitude, so they will nullify each other. But the vector which is component of this one and is exac exactly the same as the vector which is vertical component of this one, they will add together and they will be doubled because the collinear vectors are just expanding to each other along the same direction, just adding the distances. So what I have to do, I have to find the vertical component of this and this and just double it, basically. And that would be the resulting uh, force which this particular probe object will experience. So, okay, so what is it? Well, obviously it's the magnitude of this vector times uh, what? Uh, times cosine of this angle. So if this is phi, and this is phi, so I have to multiply Ea times cosine phi, and that would be my uh, vertical component. Now, what is cosine phi? Well, I can have use this triangle, right? So it's this divided by this. The, uh, the catetus which is uh, participating in this angle and hypotenuse, right? So it would be x divided by square root of d square plus x squared. Same thing with eb. Angle is the same because triangles are the same and that's eb times x divided by square root of d square plus x square. And what would be my final result? Well, I have to substitute, instead of Ea and Eb, I have to substitute this, which is the same thing. So I'll just use one of them and use the coefficient too. So, so it will be 2 times um, k uh, q x and divided by d square plus x square it's the whole d square plus x square plus to the power of one half so it will be three halves this is the resulting um, electrical intensity electrical field intensity at this particular point That's it. This is as simple as it can be. And now, so you don't think that everything is simple, I will present a little bit more complicated problem where the calculus will be involved. Now, consider you have um, a thin rod. A thin rod. Now, thin means it's infinitely thin. All right. Now let's consider that the length is um, from minus d. This is zero. This is coordinates y and x to plus zero put to plus d. Now, if it's charged with certain amount of electricity, let's say Q. We can always say that this amount of electricity is evenly distributed along the lengths. And we're talking about 
the density of electricity in this case, which is Q divided by L, which is L the length of the sink, which is Q divided by 2D. Now this is lambda, which is called a density of electricity, which means that any particular segment, let's say little segment, of some lengths has amount of electricity equal to this lambda, which is density, times the length of this. If it's the entire thing, it will be entire Q. If it's half, it will be half of the Q. So whatever it is. Anyway, the amount of electricity inside a little segment is proportional to its length, and the coefficient proportion of proportionality is lambda, which is uh, density of electricity. So the dimension of this is Coulomb divided by meter, right? Amount of electricity divided by uh, unit of lengths. So, this is given. This is the amount of electricity. The, the rod is given. This is dimension. We positioned it uh, right in the center of uh, the system of coordinates. And what we are interested in, we are interested in the intensity at some point, P, with coordinates a, b. Now, how can it be approached? Let's start from the beginning. As you see, we don't have a point object. We don't have even the finite number of points. We have infinite number of points, basically. Whatever number of points in the, in the rod. Now, how, how can we basically solve this problem? Well, this is a typical for the entire physics. We divide the big thing into small chunks. So let's consider that I have somewhere at the distance x from the zero a small chunk of this rod, small piece of the rod. Differential of x is its length. So from x to x plus dx, that's the uh, segment which I am considering. And it's so small, well, infinite, infinitesimally small, that I can actually assume that this is a point object and do whatever I need with this as a point object. And then I will integrate. Well, if, if, if it's a finite segment, I will summarize but if it's an infinitely small segment, I will integrate, which is the same thing as summarization, but on an infinite scale. So first, I have to find out what is my um, intensity based on this particular piece of the rod. This is the force, this is the vector. I can find its magnitude and um, direction. And then, since it's a function of x, I will add these factors together, summarize them, integrate them, basically, to get the final point. So far, so good, right? Okay, so let's find out E as a function of x. So this is plus 1c. Now, again, it's k times what is the charge of this particular thing? Well, again, its length is dx, the, in, the density of, infra, uh, of el electricity uh, charge is lambda, so it's lambda times, times dx. Now, divided by square of the distance, right? Okay, what is the square of the distance? Let's just use this particular drawing. Now this is A, this is B, right? So we will use this uh, right triangle. Uh, this catheter is B, and this catheter is A minus X. So the square of the distance, which is the hypotenuse, is A minus X square plus B square. This is my magnitude of the force. Now, can I integrate this by x from minus d to plus d? No. 
Why not? Well, come on, this is the magnitude, there is also a direction, and this direction is different from this direction, or from this direction. I cannot integrate this, because all the vectors have different directions, so what should I do? I should represent this, a vector e of x, as sum of two vectors. One is horizontal and one is vertical. So let's assume our vector is this way. So I have to represent it as a sum of these. So this is my e of x, this is my e y of x, and this is my e x of x. So I have to represent this vector as a sum of this plus this. This plus this. And then I will integrate separately all the x's and all the y's. Okay, now, how to do that? Well, that's basically kind of simple because you know this angle, right? This angle is equal to, uh, let's say it's, um, it's sine, sine phi is equal to b over, b over a minus x. And the cosine equals to this, which is uh, this a minus x. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not a minus x. a minus x squared plus b square, square root. This is b square. This is a minus x square. So this is square root of a minus. Okay. Now, and the cosine is equal to this. So we know sine and cosine, and that's why multiplying by cosine and the sine, this vector, this vector, we will get components, this and this one. So, e x of x is equal to, that's the projection to here, that's the cosine, right? So it's hypotenuse times cosine. So which is this one, k lambda dx divided by a minus x square plus b square times cosine a minus x divided by square root. So in which case I will do this and to the power of three seconds, one and a half, right? This is my EX, and EY of X is equal to the beginning is the same And now I have to multiply this by sine, right? Sine of this angle to get the vertical component. Which means it's by b and by 3 seconds. What should I do next? Well, next let me just slightly change my, um, uh, my, my writing in this case. This is not the entire EX, it's only a differential, which is of this particular thing, and this is also differential. So now I have to integrate it. I have to integrate this from minus d to d, and this from minus d to d, to get complete uh, 
vertical and horizontal components of the resulting um, intensity of the electrical field. And that is basically the end of my my story, because that, that's all. From, from here on, it's just technicality, as we are saying, because it's a pure mass take these integrals and, set, uh, and, and, and done with this. And you will have two components, vertical and horizontal, which means you have an entire vector. Now, I don't want to do right now this derivation of these integrals. I did it here uh, in the notes to this lecture. Uh, it, it's relatively simple integrals. You can definitely take them yourself. You can try it yourself. If no, go to the notes and notes contain complete derivation and there where you will find basically the final expression for horizontal and vertical components of this vector now uh, this is i would say more complex example of um, intensity of the electrical field i will probably try to use one more um, now this is the rod right now I will probably um, in one of the problems which I will solve I will also use the rectangle a flat um, kind of an object as the source of uh, electrical field and also it will have its own charge and I will try to make calculations related to this other than that, basically, that, that's all you really need to know about uh, the intensity of the electrical field uh, or strengths of electrical field or just simply electrical field, as some, sometimes people are saying. And again, don't forget that in all the more complex than the single point object cases, you need some mass. There is nothing you can do without it. So there is a mass for teens uh, course on the same site unisor.com and uh, I kind of suggest you to refresh your mass skills using that particular course also free without any ads etc that's it for today thank you very much and good luck <laughs>